Escaping a jail in a real life can lead to a very unpleasant consequences. But doing that during a CTF is something completely different. How to solve challenges like this? Let's find out. Hi, this is CTF School, a place where you can learn more about hacking and computer security, solving capture the flag challenges. Google, like many companies, organizes their own CTF. This year I've decided to participate and as I would expect, no task was easy to solve. I've tried my chances against a challenge named Treebox, coming from the sandbox category. Sandboxes are ways to allow users execute their code without being able to run any harmful instructions. This is usually achieved by restricting use of some dangerous functions, libraries or code constructs. The goal for challenges like this is to find a way of bypassing this protection. In this case, the author says, I think I finally got Python sandboxing right. Let's see if that's true. The data we are provided with are a pair of domain name and port that allows us to be connected with the remote instance and the file attachment containing the source code for this challenge. Looking into it, we can see it's really short. At the top, there's a few lines of comment telling us how this app runs on the challenge server, in this case inside a Docker container, and that the flag file is in the same directory as an app. The code sets the current working directory and then asks to type a source code that will run inside the sandbox. Then we can fit it line by line until we send one starting with dash dash end. That will break the loop and continue this program's execution flow. Python's built-in compile function changes provided code string into a code object that can be used later. It seems that PyCF only AST flag is telling not to run it yet, but just return its parsed version. Then code object is passed into verify secure function and only when it verifies the code is safe, we are allowed to execute it. No surprises so far. Let's try to play with it for a while. We can connect to a remote instance using netcat. This will also work the same for nearly any challenges in pawn category, so look closely for more similarities. Pawn challenges will definitely be shown on that channel soon, so feel free to subscribe not to miss it. Back to our terminal using nc treebox 2022 ctfcompetition.com and then passing the port 1337, we can connect to the remote instance. It asks for code, so let's try something simple first. Let's say 1 plus 1, then dash dash end. Okay, it, it seems to run, but not printing anything. Another try, print 1 plus 1. Run it, error, band statement. Hmm. It seems that we are already restricted. Let's look back into the source to see how it works. The verify method uses AST, which stands for abstract syntax trees. Basically can break down and analyze provided code. We can see it walks through that tree and for each node checks if it's not import or import from statement. And if it's not a function call, I think we can live without importing anything, especially that OS is already part of our script, but without an ability to call functions, we are doomed. Browsing the web and looking for similar challenges, I found that Python allows to overwrite operators using built-in methods. If we implement add method, then it will be executed when we try to add something to the object of the class it's implemented in. What if the second component will be a string containing malicious code? Then we would just need to pass it into eval function to get our RCE. But even if we implement add function, then we still not allowed to run eval, as again, it will be a function execution statement that is banned. No good. The clever trick though is that instead executing eval inside add function, we can replace add function with eval like this. Will it work? Let's find out. It's not a good idea to try to put this code manually using netcat, especially that I don't expect it to work right away. We need to write an exploit and to connect with the remote instance using Python, we're gonna use library called pawn tools. Pawn tools are really powerful and have a lot of functionality, mostly to solve pawn challenges, as it can help a lot with the binary exploitation. In our case, we will only use tubes objects helping to send and retrieve data just like Netcat would. 
I've already installed it with pip, so now I can import it with from pwn tools import all. Then we can write our malicious code and assign it to the payload variable. A class might be called evil and add method should be equal to evil. Then we need to create an instance of an evil class and add some code to it. For now, let it be just a simple print statement. Then use pawn tools to connect to the remote. Send our exploit line by line and then send dash dash end. Last thing, let's print the result down there. Run it with Python. Okay, it seems we correctly connected with the challenge server. Send the code, but still got banned statement. Why? Hmm. Turns out calling evil class constructor counts as function invocation. How can we create a class instance without calling its constructor? Experimenting and reading Python documentation, I found something interesting. Although in some cases you need to call exception constructor while throwing it, the docs shows that passing only the class to the rise statement should work as well. Built-in mechanism should create its instance which will be able to catch inside except class. Let's modify our code. Make exception a base class for evil. Rise it inside of try block. Intercept it inside of accept clause. And add a malicious code exactly like before. Try it. Oh, it says hacked. Seems that we've successfully escaped that jail. Not bad. Now just a quick modification to actually read the flag, run it again and it worked, we've got the flag. Thanks for watching another video on CTF School, let me know in the comments what kind of CTF challenge you'd like to see next. Like and subscribe not to miss new episodes. This channel is growing because of your engagement, thank you very much for that, bye.